Welcome to the Red V TV show, supported by Chapel House Cars for the 2024 season. And Saints are back in action this week as they return to the Totally Wicked Stadium for the first time in five weeks. Kevin, and for you it's a little bit longer. Do you know where it is? <laughs> I do indeed, yes. Should we get straight into it? Yeah, why not? Because we not? have busy lives, don't we, Kevin? We we certainly do, yes. Tigers in town. And first of all, uh, Academy Starlets, Kevin. Um, five Saints selected for the England Academy this week. Um, Jake Davis, Owen Dagnall, Harry Robertson, George Whitby, uh, all played, and Billy Keeley was the 18th man in a 40 points to 37 defeat to France um, at the Halliwell Jones Stadium. Um, I did see George Whitby kicked a drop goal in that game as well late on, but couldn't stop England falling to defeat. Um, but the future's bright, isn't it? It certainly is. Two tries for Harry Robertson in that game as well. One, I think it was Jake Davis who brought through and found him on the inside. Um, but yeah, it's good to see that the the lads that are getting international recognition um, and it just shows that uh, the academy once again is doing the business of bringing players through with promise and now it's up to them to fulfil that promise. Some fantastic hairdos there as well, isn't there? There are. There really are. I am absolutely insanely jealous of every single one of them. See, you'd have been all right in the late 90s, early 2000s, Kev, when everybody had a number two. Well, the, now, even back then I had her, so I was absolutely fine. Um, but yeah. It, it'll it'll it, come round again, Kevin, and then you'll be the it, stylish it, man in town. The thing is, I've probably gone from having the old usual short back and size, but having her to uh, the James Rolby cut, uh, as I've currently got. I reckon if you went to like the fancy dress shop, you could buy a wig like that. Yeah, <laughs> possibly. Uh, whereas I think if I went to the fancy dress shop, I'd be more likely to be Harry off Home Alone <laughs> and just cut, cut a hole in a hat and I'd be sound. <laughs> right. Well done, boys, being selected there. Uh, good for the recognition. And I did note in the... Um, the England press release, they, took, they said about, and George Whitby, hotly tipped to be Saints scrum half in 2025. That's a bit presumptuous, I thought. Yeah, a little bit little bit too early, though, jumping the gun. Um, nothing like pressure, is there? No. Saints uh, got down to Willowbrook Hospice um, this past week. Paul Wellens and James Roby getting down there to present them with their player sponsor shirts. Um, obviously, with um, Totally Wicked unable to sponsor down in the south of France in, in, due to the, the sponsorship laws over there, um, they yep. donated um, the space on the shirt to Willowbrook Hospice. It's also present on the the children's kits as well, um, bringing them some much needed, um, I don't want to say recognition, um, just puts them front and centre, doesn't it? It does uh, for a, a local charity. Um, that's it's probably priceless for them, um, and it, it's great to see them being recognised and great to see Saints um, and totally wicked to be fair, giving up that space on the shirt to uh, to Willowbrook. Um, I know they've, they they do absolutely outstanding work there, uh, and long may it continue. Yeah, I think I think for me the fact that it is it is such a local charity and. Um, it is there purely pretty much for the St. Helens community in their hour of need. Um, I think sometimes it gets hidden in the background because it's one of those charities that, unfortunately, it's not until you actually need or require yeah. their services um, for a family member um, that you actually become aware of uh, the fantastic work that they do. Um, my dad, um, at the end of his life, um ended up in Willowbrook Hospice. I want to say, no, I don't want to say ended up in Willowbrook Hospice. It, 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 it was, it was somewhere he went for treatment um, and he spent his last few days there. And I have to say, what an absolutely amazing place. Um, if for the, the, the dignity, the care and everything else that they show there, um, 
you you will I don't know you you, you might have uh, thoughts about hospices before you actually go in there, but absolutely wonderful places, staffed with angels, um, and they deserve every bit of support that they get. And Saints will um, be celebrating Willowbrook Hospice when they do a takeover um, at the Salford game on August the 8th. Um, more details from the club will be released about that. Um, but I'll just say from personal experience, brilliant. Brilliant place. Yeah. I say, obviously, knowing knowing your dad and, and what kind of you went through as a family, as you say, people might have preconceived ideas, but everything that you've said about Willowbrook in that time and since has been absolutely glowing. And I'll just reiterate, long may that continue. We wish that they didn't have to do what they do, but they obviously do it with such compassion, such love. Um, they're, they're a credit to the town. Absolutely. Right, Kev? It's game time. It Couple is. changes. I and yeah, two, many, many options. Yeah, I think that's uh, obviously with the squad announced with Daryl Clark and uh, Connie Harrell missing out. Uh, minor muscle turf for Daryl and a neck injury for Connie. With Johnny Lomax returning and Leon Cowan uh, coming in for his second uh, stint in the 21. Um, one of the first things we were chatting about when the squad came out was the number of options we've got in that back line that we could go with. Um and it'd be interesting to see what Wellow goes with on Friday. One that you might not have thought of, and obviously everybody's going for the obvious first, who's going to play centre, who's going to play wing. With all the squad having a week off last week, except Jack Wellsby, Matty Lees, and George Delaney, who went over to France, is it possible that especially Jack and, and Matty, who actually played in France, get a week off? It is possible, but I don't think it'll happen. I personally don't. Do you? If, if there was a game to do it, Cass at home, yeah, he's, London, would be the yeah. one. And I think, could you get away with it in the forwards? We're, we're light, aren't we? But you could... You could with George not playing in France. You could go with Parsi and Delaney, or or Delaney and Sioni to start with Parsi and Noah Stevens coming off the bench just to give Matty that week off. With Jack, I don't think you have to manage his minutes as much. Um, and with the injuries we've got on the backs, I'd probably think Jack would play. But I definitely think you could potentially have the arguments for giving Matty a week off. I've just had a look. We play Cass again at home on the 13th of September um, and hopefully we'll have a few more bodies back. I think there'd have been more of an argument for that if Morgan Knowles would have been back this week because you could have let him do a, a, a stint at prop, just left uh, James Bell at 13 as we, as he's been playing um, and do it that way. It's whether we'll just kind of go through it and manage the likes of Matty's minutes in-game so instead of him doing bigger stints, even if they take 10, 20 minutes off him here and there and are allowed to do that, I'd imagine that's what they'll try and do rather than rest the player. Although saying that, we've got uh, that lot next week, haven't we? So um, you want to make sure that you're wrapping some players up in Cottonwood. Yeah, and that and that's me thinking potentially as well. Uh, you don't want to risk Matty getting a ban this week and, and missing Wigan because that would be a hammer blow for us. Um. Listen, I think we're going to discuss a lot of options here and there's a difference between what the options are and what happens in reality, as we always discuss, based on past um, history. Um, now, Johnny Lomax is back in the squad. Wello has basically said he's going to be straight back in the halves. So you'd assume it's Johnny Lomax and Lewis Dodge a combination. Moses will go back into nine with Daryl Clark being out. So therefore, yep. next option, is there an argument that Jake Burns comes in on the bench to spell Moses? Yeah, I think so, because you're leaving yourself short, almost, of, of an option there. Uh, if you need one, I think you're probably looking at James Bell, who would have to jump in there uh, if need be. Now, I don't think James is a natural nine. He could do a job. And again, we mentioned that Castleford is probably the one that you can get away with it. Um but yeah, I think there's there's definitely an argument that we're going to see um, a debut this this week, at least one. 
Okay, so we'll get onto the backs then. Kev, yeah. right. So I would, based on Ben Davis being 18th man most weeks, making the bench regularly, I would say with Comrade Harrell missing, our centres this week will be Ben Davis and Mark Percival. That's all I've got written down. Um, Wonga might have the number three shirt, but I think he is currently better suited to the wing. Um, I don't so think Wonga's I, played on the on uh, at centre since Warrington in the cup. Since, yeah, it's been it's been a, a while since he's played there. He's, he's been signed as as that centre who can play a bit of wing, um, but I think he's playing or he, he's better suited to that wing role at the moment. Um, and I think that, as you say, the way that Wello goes with things, I don't buy this line, by the way, that you see on social media that Wello's got his favourites. He's got a squad and he's seen them in training and he's picking the lads who are turning up for him. Um, but I think going off, off previous rounds, previous seasons, your next man who is co coming into that, that starting uh, team is Ben Davis. They're your centres, and Wonga is on one wing. The decision to make is who plays on the other. Now, we spoke after Salford, um, and it was obviously instant reaction that we felt potentially it was time for T. Ritson to, to get an opportunity because, for us, John Benison wasn't doing it, isn't doing it at this moment in time. Are you still of that inkling this week? That First of all, what would you do? And second of all, what would Wello do? Because I don't know the answer to it either. No. Um, I, I, I'm i going to stick with what I said after Salford. Um, I'm going to say I'd put T. Ritson in this week. It, there's a fine balancing act between dropping a lad and absolutely crushing his confidence and having to do the best for the team after mistakes have been made. I think Benno had a better second half than he did first. Um, but do you still do you need that pace in your team? Do you need that that give him a go? Yeah, I I, I maintain that I'm not. Um, I don't think either of them are starting Super League wingers. Um, but we might as well see him because at the end of the day, that's what fans are clamouring. Someone called him the best winger at the club. Uh, T. Ritson, that is, the best winger at the club. I don't agree with that at all. I must have obviously forgot Tommy Makinson exists. Um, and he's been be being kept out of a wing spot by a centre and a full-back. Um, yeah, he needs he needs to have a go. He's been having a go Swinton and keeping his fitness up. We have seen him in a Saints shirt last season and he didn't keep his shirt but that doesn't mean that I'm just going to chuck him out and say, nah, he's, he, he doesn't deserve another chance. Going back to the very start of the episode, uh, or the start of the squad news, if you were to give Jack a week off, who would you go with at fullback? Would In that case, would it be John Benson goes into fullback? Or would you give a debut to Harry Robertson there? I think with Harry playing the other night against uh, in that, Academy game, I think that probably rules him out. out. Yeah, fair news, yeah. And you could, yeah, I mean, even if you, if you did kind of swing it about a little bit, you could play Johnny Vaughan in the centres if you wanted to. Uh, another option that's in there. Um, See, Johnny's my one I'd have on the bench this week. Yeah, I've, I've, I have written a team out. Um, I usually do, just so I can knock out the players who I think are going to miss out this week. Um, and I've got the, the Vaughan slash Burns thing as my issue there. Because I almost think if you want to give Vaughan a run out, if we're doing well and you want to give him a run out in the centres, you can shift Ben Davis over one and let him play second row. Or, you know, you, there's a there's a little bit of option there. Or you can just get him in the second row like he's played a little bit for Swinton this year and said, just get amongst them and make some tackles. Go on then, Kev. Tell us what you've knocked out for us. So, Harry Robertson, uh, Leon Cowan, um, John Benison is the other one, and I've said I'm between Vaughan and Burns because I, I do think that if we're going into next year, 
and we need to bring in a seven or a nine, and we're going to instead move Moses to the halves, we're probably looking at Jake Burns as that next option. I'd hate for us to go in with um, Jake Wingfield or Morgan Knowles as that option at nine. So I think we need to see Jake Burns. Whether we do or not is another matter. Well, do you know when we did the, the contracts the other day, was Jake Burns an option for 2025 or a guarantee? I think, I think it was an option. So if it's an option then, if you are considering him being part of the squad for 2025, you need to see what he can do. Yeah, of course you do. And, and, because you... And, and there's only so many games you can actually do it into. He's not going to be against Warrington. It's not going to be against Wigan. You've got a, probably a few home games. The two Cass home games are perfect for that. Yeah. And you've got to you've got to kind of if you're gonna if you're gonna keep him on and he is gonna be pretty much second choice behind Daryl Clark, because if unless we brought someone in, obviously, you, you need that, that player to be able to to know what it takes to, to cut it and to know what he's he's coming up against in the Super League. Because there might be games we need him to start. I, I I don't know. I'd I'd like to see Johnny Vaughan given a run, but I, I think we need to see Jake Burns more. Quite frankly, Kev, given that we've had a week off last week, we've got Wigan next week, and we've got a couple of players injured. I genuinely do not know what our seventeen is going to be this week. No, same. I mean, I mean, normally I think... we're very, and normally we're. I'd say sixteen out of seventeen. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, and just from so, just from working it out. Yeah, sometimes when we have a punt on something that's happened before, and we'll get everyone right, or there'll be someone on the bench and someone started. I think maybe be sometimes you see like Delaney and Parsi or somebody like that. You think, oh, they'll start start Iggy and not George Delaney, especially before Iggy's injury. That might have been one that you'd argue either way. Um, but I completely get that. I completely see that. We could shuffle the backs because it's Castleford and we should be beating Castleford. Um, we could give um, forwards time off. We could give two debuts out. Yeah, it could be anything, couldn't it, really? Yeah. What's annoying is we don't get the team leak this year, as in previous <laughs> years. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what the common denominator is, but something's changed this year where the team doesn't get leaked. Right. Yeah, it's mad. Uh, just, <laughs> just, just for everyone watching, uh, watching, um, T. Ritson is currently at Malmeninga level. <laughs> uh, you know what? I mean, all, all joking aside, the amount of of kind of ways that that fan bases go throughout the season. So we're skint is one thing that keeps coming up, which is absolute rubbish when you're spending two point seven million pound on uh, wages and watch our last video where we discussed is that is it being well spent people can argue that till the cows come home if it's being well spent but we are spending money the other one is if you don't get picked you're the best player in the world yeah T. Ritson could be named on the wing for Saints and in the comments on socials you'd still be, see people posting where's T because it's just a default isn't it yeah. Right. Well, he's in well, my we, team. <laughs> we will be playing on a new pitch. Yes. At eight on Friday. <laughs> 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 the pitch ain't sh shy of grass. Ain't shabby. Ain't shabby. Um, we were down at the stadium last week, weren't we? Just having a quick look, nosy round. Um, pitch is looking really good. Oh. That's something we've not mentioned. Uh, stadium tours at, at the at the ground. I think there's one. Is it Friday the twenty sixth? Um. So if you've never had a chance to get round to, uh, round the stadium into the changing rooms, I'm sure they'll have you walking out onto the pitch. I'm sure you'll see the, uh, the boardroom with all the trophies that have been won over the years. Um. Mike Rush might let you sit in his office and sign a few players. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's good to see the club looking at different ways of getting the fans involved as well. Absolutely. I think that's on behalf of the Community Foundation as well. I think it is, yeah. yeah. Um, absolutely right. It just like people see behind the scenes and the little bits of the, the stadium that you don't see. 
Yeah. But back to Friday night, I think when you see the pitch, you'll be amazed how good it looks. Yeah, it looks tremendous. Um, properly looks like a carpet, doesn't it? Thanks um, to our lovely friends at Liverpool FC. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> And fingers crossed. It, Don't it, clip it, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to do it. Um, and fingers crossed it, obviously, it, it stays in that, that condition that we've seen it in. Um, it's it's not not like the, the old pitch, so fingers crossed we uh, we can have a surface to be proud of. Yeah. As long as we don't have 200 kids sliding around on it after the game, we'll be all right. Moving on. Cast <laughs> squad, Kevin. Yeah, uh, five changes to the squad. Uh, Sylvester Damo, Sam Wood, Sam Hall, Josh Hodgson and Nixon Putt all come out. And George Lawler, Daniel Handmarsh, Lewis Johnson, Sammy Kabula and Liam Watts all come in. And it's good to see George Lawler in that squad. Um, he had a seizure back in April, which caused a small bleed on the brain. Um, so I'm not sure he will take to the field, but it's a good step in his recovery. That I think he played reserves against Bradford, um, and then he might not have quite had enough minutes for this game, but good to see him back in and around. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Um, see him making that recovery. Um, Cass, Kev, we seem to have wrote them off a little bit, but they give... Um, they gave Wigan a good game the other week, didn't they? Um, yeah. And, and they've been improving. And I think when you look at their squad numbers, you'd think, hmm, there's not many in the lower numbers and we're starting to get to lottery number stage. Um, but I think that just shows the development and turnover of their squad a little bit. Um, and I think um, they're doing a, a decent job over there. I know they've lost the last three, but they lost by a point to Hull KR, two points to Wigan. We'll forget the Leeds game, beat Hull FC. The results might not always be there, but they are getting better. Yeah, and they're going to have a point to prove after we played them over at the jungle because we got reduced to 12 men. Obviously, Tommy got sent off. And you think, well, you've got the extra man. You should be taking the lead in this game. And they didn't. We we went and scored another try. I know they then got reduced to 12 in the second half. But they put in... Uh, a woeful defensive performance. It's like they switched off. The the effort and energy that they needed to stay in the, the game just wasn't there at all. Um, so they're, they're going to have a point to prove. Um, and yet, we're saying this all with the caveat of, oh yeah, well, it's because it's cast and we can do this and we can do that. We've still got to turn up with the, the right attitude. We've still got to be good, disciplined. Again, I feel like I should just have it on a, a background behind me. Saying discipline with the ball, discipline in your tackling, discipline in your passing, your kicking. I don't just mean high shots, things like that. I'm talking about making sure you are secure in what you're doing. We need to turn up with a good attitude. If we do, we should we should be fine against Cass. And I will always just keep saying should. Yeah. Um Warrington play Huddersfield on Friday night. We can play Lee. Slip ups can happen there and you and you've got to make sure that you're professional. And do your yeah. job and take advantage of the opportunities that come your way. Um, that is the end of the show. The only thing left to ask you, Kevin, is a prediction. Uh, say it's by 30. Ooh, that's what I was going to go for. I just I think that we need to do exactly the same as Cass. And after that game against Salford, where it seemed like we left a bit of, I don't know, effort. I don't, don't like level, necessarily levelling it, plays, but... Just that we left something else on that pitch. We didn't we didn't almost give everything that we had there. And whether, as I said at the time, we were trying to play within ourselves so we could be that second half team and, and go and win the game, that didn't work. So we've got to we've got to put a performance down. Absolutely. We need a rock up our hands. Someone's proud of you, but haven't they? They've given us some new tools. Oh yeah, that's, a, that's the smallest celebration I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> on that note, Kevin, it's time to go. Uh, we will be back on Friday evening. 
uh, for the instant reaction. Don't forget to share and subscribe. <laughs> and we'll catch you very soon.